Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to old ages lampant peaks. The idea of lampant glowing, uh, this kind of thing, the embers, right? Whitman said this was an essential poem and I think what he meant by that is if you really want to understand the pain and suffering I enjoined at the end of my life, this is an essential poem. It is poem 57 of the 58 of Sands at 70, so clearly we're coming to the end of the first annex, as it's called. Our assumptions are that you've been with us right from the very beginning at LearnStrong.net, uh, those inscription poems, and as well a set of introductory comments to Sands at 70. And we just finished a companion read with an evening lull. This poem will be every bit as difficult to read as the previous poem was. Now, our Nortons will tell us that this was first printed in the Century that Magazine newspaper of September 1888. It was not among the Sands at 70 poems in November Bows. It was first collected in the Annex of 1884 um, uh, and 88, and it and reprints, and the birthday leaves of grass of 1889. Upon hearing that his friend Harned liked this poem, Whitman said, um, quote, so do I. To me, it's an essential poem. It needed uh, to be made. So let's look. I mean, uh, if, if Whitman says this was a necessary poem, again, for those uh, who say we shouldn't even be studying or reading these, these latter poems, they're kind of not really useful, not very good, I would argue there is some quality to these poems. More importantly, there is Whitman in these poems. And if we're going to call it Talks with Walt, we want to get all the way to the end of all of his poetry. Old age, you'll remember, in the little poem, Youth, uh, Day, Old Age, and Night. So we're familiar with this phrase, old age. And then Lampant, as, we've, uh, as uh, we said, this idea of glowing or gleaming, will take us back to the States, right, the poem. And then uh, Peaks, you'll remember, with Low Victress on the Peaks. He'll say it this way. The touch of flame. And if you'll think about it, so much of this, of, of this entire reading of Leaves of Grass has been about touching, grasping, hugging, and all of that. The touch of flame, the illuminating fire, and again, illuminating makes a whole lot of sense. This is part of Whitman as teacher, huh? The loftiest look at last, and I can't help but think of Keats's Bright Star, the poem supposedly he read as his last offering. Go back and look at what he had to say about that at LearnStrong.net. Or City, Passion, See, notice your trinities. But notice how passion sits in the middle between city and sea. Many have pointed out, Whitman loves to do these kind of almost like paradoxical listings that don't, I mean, why would you put passion in between city and sea? Or prairie, mountain, wood, again, you're back to your three. The earth itself, and again, I told you guys, everything comes back to the earth for Whitman, which is again why I think we love to read him along with Emerson and Thoreau as those classic transcendentalists. Although to be fair, Emily Dickinson as well will play that game of always coming back. I like the idea that the earth grounds Whitman in some way. Um, the airy, different, changing hues of all that idea of the colors we've already seen in falling twilight. So it's coming on, right? We've seen twilight already in uh, Sands at 70. Objects and groups, Bearings, faces, remember I, a song of myself, 47, he says it, I see God in my face and in other faces. Reminiscences, we know how he uses that word. The calmer sight, go back to an evening lull when he said, um, at, toward the ending day of calm. The calmer sight, the golden setting, clear and broad, so much in the atmosphere, the points of view, and I love that he uses points of view as a poet, as a writer. The situations whence we scan, brought out by them alone, so much, and then he'll say it, perhaps the best, and that's the only use of that phrase, perhaps the best. You'll remember from the very beginning when he uses perhaps, I said this is part of his epistemological fallibilism. He's not an absolutist. He says it kind of like, perhaps it's the best. I'm not, I'm not totally sure about that. Uh, unwrecked before the lights indeed from them and then he'll say it old ages lampant peaks and the the idea that lampant gets used eight times in leaves of grass I think is fascinating and here the idea that um, we're using this construction to try to capture what it's like at the end to look back and to see something of all of his creative work. And how does he see it? And what is it that are these reminiscences? I find this 
a really interesting little poem at 2A. They, that is to say, the older we get, maybe the better the view. The peak, the idea of being on the mountain, will of course make us think immediately of the knoll that he will take us to as students in Song of Myself 46. Some of you are smiling because I always come back to that precious passage of Song of Myself 46, 47. I take you on a knoll, my left hand round the waist, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I love it to be all of the threes, the trinities, that have been a part of the ending poems of Leaves of Grass. Some have seen certain kind of Christian o o overtones, for sure. Um, I mentioned a 3A bright star of Keats, uh, some arguing that 1821 poem right before he died at 25. I think there is a lot of Keats, and I, you know, Ode to the Nightingale comes to mind. I think if after your study of Sands at 70, you sit down with me at LearnStrong.net and follow my lecture on Ode to the Nightingale, you will see a whole lot of, uh, of that there. You'll remember the F word of that poem is fade and forlorn, and certainly we have a lot of that happening in these Sands at 70 poems. Finally, a 3B. Um, just to try and tie it back to the idea of peaks, what is for you the best view you've ever had? And how is reading Leaves of Grass changing your view of yourself and your world, your country? I hope, I hope it's been productive. Thank you.